हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर सुमंत कुमार झा एंड आई वेलकम यू टू दर्ड पार्ट ऑफ द ऑनलाइन लेक्चर फ्रॉम द स्टोरी द एनिमी ब्यूटिफुली पेंट डाउन बाय पर्ल एस बक दिस वीडियो is in continuation to the previous video lecture that i had delivered on the chapter the enemy thus agreed together they lifted the man he was very light like a fowl fowl is hen bird that had been half starved for a long time until it is only feathers and skeleton so his arms hanging they carried him up the steps and into the side door of the house this door opened into a passage and down the passage they carried the man towards an empty bedroom it had been the bedroom of sadao's father and since his death it had not been used they laid the man on the deeply matted floor everything here had been japanese to please the old man who would never in his own home sit on a chair or sleep in a foreign bed Hana went to the hall cupboards and slid back a door and took out a soft quilt. She hesitated. The quilt was covered with flowered silk and the lining was pure white silk. So Sadao lifted the man they had uh, now this bring the man back home and to treat the man. So Sadao lifted the man into the house. He was very light like a fowl like a bird. and uh, then the arms were hanging and the duo carried him up the steps into the side door of the house the door opened into a passage and they went down the passage towards an empty bedroom this bedroom was dr sadao hoki's father's bedroom and uh, had not been used after his death so that was father is dead now and the room was lying empty so the injured man was laid on the thick mat of the floor uh, the writer describes here that everything in the room was japanese as uh, uh, sadao's father disliked foreign things So Hana went to the cupboard and to uh, took a soft quilt. She resisted putting it on the injured man because the man was dirty. The quilt was made of silk, had a flowery print on it, and the lining was made of pure white silk. Hence she hesitated whether to put this quilt on this wounded blood stained dirty prisoner of war so she hesitated here and she remarks even he is so dirty she murmured in distress yes he had better be washed sadao agreed if you will fetch hot water i will wash him so out of sadness out of distress Hana said that uh, this man is so dirty and Sadao replied that I can wash this man before I uh, go on for the operation I cannot bear for you to touch him she said we shall have to tell the servants he is here i will tell you me now she can leave the children for a few minutes and she can wash him so she loved her husband and therefore she stopped him from washing the man saying that let me ask yumi to clean this wounded man uh, 
so she can uh, leave the children for a few moments and can come and wash him sada considered a moment let it be so he agreed you tell you me and i will tell the others but the utter pallor of the man's unconscious face moved him first to stoop and feel his pulse it was faint but it was there he put his hand against the man's cold breast the heart too was yet alive pallor means an unhealthy pale and white face stoop is to bend forward and pulse is the heartbeat so sadao thought for a moment what to do and then agreed with hana he said okay you go and tell you me and i'll uh, tell the other seven but before he moved he saw the young man's face and he thought to feel his pulse he felt that the pulse rate was uh, slow uh, that means the heart beat was still on it was beating the heart was beating and it indicated that he was alive so he placed his hand on the man's heart to feel sadao concluded thus that the injured man was alive he will die unless he is operated on sadao said considering the question is whether he will not die anyway sadao commented that if the man was not operated upon he would die he also added that even if he was operated upon and saved he would die at the hands of the japanese army so either ways he would die hana cried out in fear don't try to save him what if he should live hana screamed with fear and asked sadao not to save the man she feared that if he lived they would be in danger what if he should die sadao replied he stood gazing down on the motionless man this man must have extraordinary vitality or he would have been dead by now but then he was very young perhaps not even 25 vitality is full of energy so sadao questioned that what would be the implications if the man died he looked down towards the injured man and wondered that he had a lot of energy which had kept him alive through such torture he countered his thoughts with the fact that the man was very young he seemed to be 25 years of age and at that age people have lot of energy hana asked that did he mean that man could die during the operation sadao confirmed her question hana considered this doubtfully and when she did not answer sadao turned away at any rate something must be done with him he said and first he must be washed he went quickly out of the room and hana came behind him she did not wish to be left alone with the white man he was the first she had seen since she left america and now he seemed to have nothing to do with those whom she had known there here he was her enemy a menace living or dead menace is danger a threat so hana was pondering over this possibility and as she was taking time to reply sadao left he said that something had to be done with the injured man irrespective of the result but the first thing was to wash him so as he walked out of the room hana followed him she did not want to remain in the room alone with 
the white skinned man. Since she left America, he was the first white man she had seen. She had no contact with the Americans whom she had met as they were her enemies. This injured man was also an enemy and was a threat to them. So even she walked off. She turned to the nursery and called Yumi. But the children heard her voice and she had to go in for a moment and smile at them and play with the baby boy now nearly three months old over the baby's soft black hair she motioned with her mouth yumi come with me so hana turned to the children's room and called out yumi's name as the children heard a voice uh, she went inside comforted the children, smiled at them and played with the three month old son. As she held the baby, she said, Yumi, you come with me, follow me. I will put the baby to bed, Yumi replied, he is ready. She went with Yumi into the bedroom next to nursery and stood with the boy in her arms while Yumi spread the sleeping quilts on the floor and laid the baby between them. So Hana led the way quickly and softly. So Yumi replied that the baby was ready for sleep and that she must put it to sleep before accompanying her. Now the uh, Yumi spread the sleeping quilt and laid the baby between them. Then Hana led the way quickly and softly to the kitchen. The two servants were frightened at what their master had just told them. The old gardener, who was also a house servant, pulled a few hairs on his upper lip. So the two servants in the kitchen were scared after hearing their master's words regarding the injured man. Dr. Sadao Hoki had informed them that uh, he had brought an injured man and he needs treatment so he would treat the injured man but the old gardener who also worked as a servant was pondering over the news and pulling the hair from his upper lip he was actually pondering over whether this man uh, to be saved or not the master ought not to heal the wound of this white man he said bluntly to hana the white man ought to die. First he was shot, then the sea caught him and wounded him with the rocks. If the master heals what the gun did and what the sea did, they will take revenge on us. So the old gardener spoke bluntly to Hana. He said that the injured man must not be treated. He is destined to die. According to the gardener, firstly he had been wounded by the gun and secondly the rocks of the sea wounded him. Further, if Dr. Sadao healed the wounds given by the gun and the sea, then the gun and the sea would treat them as enemies and seek revenge. So uh, he was of the firm belief that the American prisoner of war should not be treated. I will tell you what you say, Hana replied courteously. But she herself was also frightened. Although he was not superstitious as the old man was, could it ever be well to help an enemy? Nevertheless, she told Yumi to fetch the hot water and bring it to the room where the white man was. So Hana politely said to the gardener that she will convey this message to Dr. Sadao. But uh, even she was frightened. Although she was not superstitious uh, as the old gardener was who said that uh, uh, the sea and the gun would seek revenge. But she thought that helping an enemy could never be good for them. Still, she asked Yumi to get hot water into the room where the injured man was kept. She went ahead and slid back the partitions. So
Sada was not there. Yumi, following, put down her wooden bucket. Then she went over to the white man. When she saw him, her thick lips folded themselves into stubbornness. I have never washed a white man, she said, and I will not wash so dirty a one now. She was a stubborn lady in this regard. When uh, Hana took her with the hot water to the injured man's room, uh, where Sada was not there, she kept the bucket and when Yumi saw the white man, her thick lips folded and the expressions on her face indicated her determination when she said firmly that she had never washed an American man and that she would never wash one who was so dirty as that injured man. Hana cried at her severely. You will do what your master commands you. Hana reacted to Yumi's refusal. She screamed at her that she was supposed to follow her master's orders. There was so fierce a look of resistance upon Yumi's round, dull face that Hana felt unreasonably afraid. After all, if the servant should report something that was not as it happened, so Yumi fears is dangerous and resistance is refusal to accept anything. So Yumi resisted strongly and firmly and Hana was worried, she was frightened that if the servants reported something different from what had happened, they could land into trouble. Very well, she said with dignity. You understand we only want to bring him to his senses so that we can turn him over as a prisoner. Hana changed her expressions to respect and said, very well, if you are not willing to, it's okay. She also explained to Yumi that they intended to bring the unconscious man uh, into his senses and then they would hand him over as a prisoner. That is so simple. I will have nothing to do with it, Yumi said. I am a poor person and it is not my business. Yumi said that she is not concerned about their plans. Uh, she is poor and she should not get muddled in uh, this kind of thing. Then please, Hana said gently, return to your own work. At once Yumi left the room, but this left Hana with the white man alone. She might have been too afraid to stay had not her anger at Yumi's stubbornness now sustained her. Sustained is continued. So Hana said to Yumi uh, that if she is unwilling to wash the man, she should return to her work. And Yumi left the room. Hana was left alone with the white man. Although if you remember earlier, she was not willing to stay with the white man because never she had stayed after she left America. Uh, she almost disliked this man. So she would have been afraid to remain there all alone, but her anger on Yumi's firm determination made her stay in the room. Otherwise, she would have left the room. Stupid Yumi, she muttered fiercely. Is this anything about but a man and a wounded, helpless man? Hana said with anger that Yumi was a stupid person. She said that it was just an injured man. In the conviction of her own superiority, she bent impulsively and untied the knotted rugs that kept the white man covered. When she had his breast bare, she dipped the small clean towel that Yumi had brought into the steaming hot water and washed his face carefully. The man's skin though rough with exposure, was a fine texture and must have been very blonde when he was a child. Conviction is firm belief. Impulsively is to do something suddenly without thinking. 
and rugs a blanket bond of light color so hana was so full of anger at the refusal by the maid that without thinking she opened the blanket in which the man was injured now his chest was bare took the uh, she took the small towel dipped it into the steaming hot water and started cleaning the man now the man's skin was rough due to being exposed to the sun but it had a good texture and he must have been very fair as a child while she was thinking these thoughts though not really liking the man better now that he was no longer a child she kept on washing him until his upper body was quite clean but she dared not turn him over where was sadao now her anger was ebbing decreasing gradually and she was anxious again and she rose she stood up wiping her hands on the wrong towel then lest the man be chilled she put the quilt over him chill this to freeze so hana kept on cleaning the man uh, 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 and she had some thoughts although she did not like the man as he was not a child anymore but she did not have the courage to turn him over and she thought of sadao her anger was decreasing now and she started becoming restless she stood up and wiped her hands with the wrong towel as she did not want the man to freeze due to the cold weather she put the quilt back on him sadao she called softly he had been about to come in when she called his hand had been on the door and now he opened it she saw that he had brought his surgeon's emergency bag and that he wore his surgeon's coat so hana cry, uh, cried out for sadao and uh, he had been on the door when she had called him he opened the door and hana saw that uh, dr sadao was carrying his surgeon's emergency bag and was wearing his surgeon's coat it symbolized it indicated that dr sadahuki was prepared to operate upon the injured man you have decided to operate she cried yes he said shortly he turned his back to her and unfolded a sterilized towel upon the floor of the tokonoma alcove and put his instruments upon it Tokonoma alcove is uh, generally a part of the room where things are displayed. Uh, an alcove in Japanese home uh, means displaying a flowery arrangement or other pieces of art. So that uh, towel was spread and Hana asked Sadao that had he decided to operate the man? and uh, it was a positive response by dr sadahoki and uh, actually dr sadahoki did not want hana to object his decision so he started his work he opened a sterilized towel on the floor of the tokonoma alcove and placed his uh, surgical instruments on it fetch towels he said sadahoki asked Hana to get the towels. She went obediently, but how anxious now, to the linen shelves and took out the towels. There ought also to be old pieces of matting so that the blood would not ruin the fine flow covering. She went out to the back veranda where the gardener kept strips of matting with which to protect delicate shrubs and coal nights. and took an armful of them so hana obeyed her husband she was an obedient wife 
and went to bring the towels. This time she was happy to, to help the injured man. Uh, Shosi got uh, some rough mats from the backyard also, which were used by the car gardener to cover the delicate shrubs from the cold weather. But when she went back into the room, she saw this was useless. The blood had already soaked through the packing in the man's wound and had ruined the mat under him. So by the time Hana reached the room, uh, she saw that blood had flowed through the bandage on the man's wound and had stained the mat beneath him. So her effort was worthless, futile. Oh, the mat, she cried. Yes, it is ruined, Sadao replied, as though he did not care. Help me to turn him, he commanded her. She obeyed him without a word and he began to wash the man's back carefully so on seeing the stained mat hana cried that the mat had been spoiled and sadao agreed that the mat had been ruined in such a manner uh, that means it cannot be uh, brought back and also sadao did not bother uh, about it at all Sadao ordered Hana to help him turn the man over uh, so that he can wash the white man. You may, would not wash him, she said. Did you wash him then? Sadao asked, not stopping for a moment, his swift concise moment. Yes, she said. He did not seem to hear her, but she was used to his absorption when he was at work. She wondered for a moment if it mattered to him what was the body upon which he worked so long as it was for the work he did so excellently. Concise is short. So Hana told Sadao that Yumi disagreed to wash the man and that she has washed this white man. He, he started uh, cleaning the white man, he did not stop and he made fast small movements of his hand as he cleaned him carefully. Sadao was so engrossed in his work most often that uh, he ignored all other statements made by Hana. And Hana wondered that Sadao was not bothered who the injured man was. He was only concerned in performing his work well, being an excellent doctor and a dutiful doctor. You will have to give the anesthetic if he needs it, he said. I? She repeated blankly. But never have I. It is easy enough, he said impatiently. He was taking out the packing now and the blood began to flow more quickly. He peered into the wound with the bright surgeon's light fastened on his forehead. The bullet is still there, he said with cool interest. Now I wonder how deep this rock wound is. If it is not too deep, it may be that I can get the bullet. But the bleeding is not superficial. He has lost much of his blood. So anesthetic is a substance that induces insensitivity to pain. Uh, he said Hana that uh, she would have to inject the injured man with a substance that induces insensibility to pain. Hana replied that she had never done that. But Sadao said in a haste that it was very easy. Sadao was removing the packing and now the blood started flowing faster. He looked at the wound with the help of the bright surgeon's light fixed on his forehead. He announced that the bullet was inside the man's body. He wondered that how deep the wound made by the rock was. He said that if the wound was not very deep, then he could get the bullet out. He also added 
that the bleeding was not from the surface of the skin which meant that the wound was deep and the man had already lost a lot of blood at this moment hana choked he looked up and saw her face the color of sulfur hana choked at this moment he looked up and saw her face the face color of sulfur yellowish in color uh, means don't faint he said sharply he did not put down his exploring instrument if i stop now the man will surely die she clapped her hands to her mouth and leaped up and ran out of the room outside in the garden he heard her retching but he went on with his work sadao reacted when he saw hana uh, about to vomit uh, retching as uh, vomiting about to she felt uh, like vomiting so uh, hana was being said by dr sadao hoki that do not faint although he did not stop the work and continued inspecting the wound sadao said that if he stopped at this moment the injured man would certainly die so hana clapped uh, her mouth with both her hands jumped up and ran out of the room sadao could hear her vomiting in the garden but he continued with his work he was absorbed in his work it will be better for her to empty her stomach he thought he had forgotten that of course she had never seen an operation but her distress and her inability to go to her at once made him impatient and irritable with his man who lay like dead under his knife sadao wanted to help hana but at the same time uh, he thought that it would be better for her to empty her stomach so that she would not feel uneasy time and again uh, although he was reminded that hana was seeing this operation for the first time and it was not a pleasant thing to see sada was irritated and impatient as his wife was under stress and he was not able to help her due to the man the american prisoner of war who lay under his knife he was just like a dead person this man he thought there is no reason on the heaven why he should live sadao thought that there was no reason for him to make efforts to save this man because there was no reason for him to live why is he saving his enemy he is not taking care of his wife rather he is busy operating this white american who is his enemy so he was irritated too unconsciously this thought made him ruthless ruthless is harsh or merciless and he proceeded swiftly in his dream the man moaned he cried but sadao paid no heed except to mutter at him so sadao became merciless and started working fast the injured man uh, cried in pain uh, but he was in a state of unconsciousness and sadao kept on working without paying attention to the man's pain groan he muttered groan if you like i am not doing this for my own pleasure in fact i do not know why i am doing it sadao said to the injured man that he was free to cry in pain sadao was not concerned that the man was in pain he did not want to operate him and did not have any reason for doing so the door opened and there was hana again Where is the anesthetic? She asked in a clear voice. Sadao motioned with his chin. It is as well that you came back. 
he said, this fellow is beginning to stir, beginning to move, getting conscious. Uh, she had the bottle and some cotton in her hand. But how shall I do it? She asked. Simply saturate the cotton and hold it near his nostrils. Sadao replied without delaying for a moment the intricate detail of his work. When he breathes badly, move it away a little. So Hana came in and this time uh, her stomach was empty. So she asked that where is anesthetic and she was ready to do it. Dr. Sadao Hoki said that uh, you can have the cotton, uh, dip it in the anesthesia and uh, take it close to his nostrils so that he uh, gets uh, fainted or unconscious and if you see him uh, breathing badly then remove it from his nostril she crouched close to the sleeping face of the young american he was a piteously thin face she thought and the lips were twisted the man was suffering, whether he knew it or not. Watching him, she wondered if the stories they heard sometimes of the sufferings of prisoners were true. They came like flickers of rumor told by word of mouth and always contradicted. In the newspapers, the reports were always that wherever the Japanese armies went, the people received them gladly with cries of joy and their liberation. But sometimes she remembered such men as General Takima, who at home beat his wife cruelly. Though no one mentioned it now that he had fought so victorious a battle in Manchuria. If a man like that could be so cruel to a woman in his power, would he not be cruel to the one like this for instance? So she crouched close to the face of the prisoner of war. And she felt pity on him. She saw the scar marks and some rumors flickered in her mind about uh, the Japanese army that how people appreciated their presence. They welcomed and they respected the Japanese army. That was a fact. But on the other hand, there uh, were also men like General Takima who was so cruel and brutal that uh, most often she, he used to beat his wife. She hoped anxiously that this man had not been tortured. It was at this moment that she observed deep red scars on his neck just under the ear. So she hoped that this man had not been tortured by the army. But by then she saw the mark, the scar mark just under the ear. Those scars, she murmured, lifting her eyes to Sadao, but he did not answer. At this moment, he felt the tip of his instrument strike against something hard, dangerously near the kidney. All thought left him. He felt only the purest pleasure. He probed with his fingers, delicately, familiar with every atom of this human body. His old American professor of anatomy had seen to that knowledge. Ignorance of human body is the surgeon's cardinal sin, sirs. He had thundered at his classes year after year. To operate without as complete knowledge of the body as if you had made it, anything less than that is murder. So at this moment, uh, Sadao felt the tip of the uh, bullet near the kidney. Uh, it was very close to the kidney and he was not thinking anything else. He was finally happy uh, to have found the bullet. He remembered his professor of anatomy in America who had told him that if a surgeon ignored the knowledge of any part of the body, any atom of the body, it was the first misdeed that he committed. To operate upon a body without detailed knowledge of it is as much as the person who makes it has wound amount to committing murder of that body.
Sadao's professor would repeat it that if you have no knowledge of the entire body, if you have less knowledge, if you have partial knowledge of any atom and you go for the operation, you are actually to kill a person, to murder a person. It is not quite at the kidney, my friend, if you can underline it, my friend. Sadao murmured. It was his habit to murmur to the patient when he forgot himself in an operation. My friend, underline, he always called his patients and so now he did, forgetting that this was his enemy. He addressed that patient as my friend. Uh, was it the voice of his heart? Although with every patient he uh, used to address them as my friend. So there was nothing unusual about it. But he forgot that this man was not a friend but an enemy. Then quickly with the cleanest and the most precise of incisions the bullet was out. Precise is accurate and in seasons means surgical cuts. The man quivered, he trembled, but he was still unconscious. Nevertheless, he muttered a few English words. So finally, the bullet was out, removed from the body. The man trembled in pain and he muttered some English words. Guts, he muttered, choking. They got my guts. Sadao, Hana cried sharply. Hush, Sadao said. The man sank again into silence so profound that Sadao took up his rest, hating the touch of it. Yes, there was still a pulse, so faint, so feeble, but enough. If he wanted the man to live, to give hope. Guts here means kidney. So the man cried in pain, although he was unconscious, but he muttered in pain. Uh, he meant that he was brave and courageous uh, and the Japanese army would have a tough time while punishing him. Upon hearing him, Hana cried to Sadao. Sadao said, that yes, he could feel the pulse. He, he, he checked his wrist and his heartbeat. Uh, the man was still alive. His pulse was there, although it was very weak. Sadao thought that it was enough for a person who had a desire to live. There was still hope that the man would survive. This is the kind of interval that we are giving for part two. So till now, we have uh, seen that the man uh, who was an American uh, prisoner of war came at the coastal uh, part of Japan, which was near um, Sadao's house. They helped him, they brought him back in their residence, they treated him. Uh, the man was badly injured. Now the bullet was taken out, although the pulse was weak, we'll find out in the uh, next part of this video lecture whether he manages to survive after the operation or not. Thank you.